What's up everybody? It is Juan from The Refined Gent. So, in today's video, I'm going to talk to you about why I got out of the Marine Corps. Stay tuned. So before I get all the hate comments from all the motards and bootlickers out there, uh, I served for six and a half years. Did uh, the first three and a half of those, I was an avionics technician, worked mainly on Harriers. And then afterwards I did uh, Marine Security Guard duty, which is basically uh, embassy security. Uh, so I was posted all over the world. I was posted in the Republic of, the Republic of Congo, Malta, India, and Croatia. Um, by the time uh so usually it's a three it's a it's three posts that you go to I actually was lucky enough i went to four um so yeah i did plenty of different things when i was in the marine corps i i went on the i didn't actually go on a normal like what you would think of as a deployment um you know it's like iraq or afghanistan unfortunately uh i was on the 31st marine expeditionary unit uh doing cobra gold which is like right off the coast of thailand um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, had a pretty easy time in the Marine Corps, you know, for, for uh, 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 if you really look at most people's uh, experience, but there were so many reasons why I got out of the Marine Corps. Um, now, I had a great time when I was in the Marine Corps, met some of the most amazing people I've ever met, uh, some of whom I still hold as very dear friends. I learned a lot from the good and the bad, and yeah, it's, it's all contributing factors. So um, yeah, I'm gonna share with you why I got out. All right, the first reason, and really I decided this before I even got into the Marine Corps, and that is it was never my goal to make it a career. So I knew from just uh, talking with people, because I did my research ahead of time, uh, the longer you stay in, the harder it is to get out. And what they mean by that is the longer you stay in, the harder it is to, to stay out of the military because after a while, the military is all you ever know. Uh, generally speaking, when you join the military, you join pretty, especially the Marine Corps, you join quite young. You join at like 18, 19 years old. So by the time you actually um, go in, this is generally speaking like the first job you've ever had. Um, and I did not want that to become me. So I said, okay, I'm gonna do one, maybe two enlistments. What I actually did was I actually extended on my contract which is why I did six and a half years, which is kind of a weird number. And, and I just finished my contract and that's it, I got out. Um, now, no judgment on people who decide to make it a career, just not what I personally wanted to do. I wanted to be able to go out and be a civilian and do other things that I wanted to do. So piggybacking off of this first point, um, my second one, uh, I wanted to expand my portfolio and not just do the military. So I wanted to see other things that I can take on, take on different different opportunities, whatever. Now, I'm the kind of person that I don't like to just stick to one thing. Uh, I know some people that they do the same job, same career for the rest of their lives, and that's okay. Not something I've done, not something I wanna do. Uh, I've actually done several different things uh, up until this point. Uh, I'll actually be 29 uh, next month, so, you know, for me, I, I, I've done a lot of different things and I'm still trying to figure out different things to do. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to expand my portfolio and not just have the military as my focus because I just found that is actually pretty limiting in, in certain respects. Um, so yeah, that's all I gotta say about that one. All right, number three, I wanted to live a more normal life and um, focus on myself a little bit. So. You know when I, and I'm gonna link the videos down below but um, so I made a video a couple months ago about um, you know what to what to look out for when you when you're joining the military like things to think about and one of the things I talked about is like you have to understand that you're serving a higher purpose you're not there for yourself you're not there for your own self-interests all the time like you gotta you gotta be willing to sacrifice quite a lot um, you know for the for, for the organization for the, for your branch of service for your unit etc for your buddies and after a while I said okay look you know I've done already enough I've sacrificed quite a bit of my personal life um, you know and I just wanted to focus on myself and do what I wanted to do all right there's nothing wrong with that uh, and also just living with a more normal life now I still don't necessarily live a, like a quote-unquote normal life but um, Still, I just wanted to be able to, to, to go to work, go home, do what I wanted to do, uh, not get screwed with, not have to answer to anybody, 
uh, and just be able to like, if I wanted to go out and have fun, if I wanted to go on vacation, if I wanted to spend time with, you know, a girlfriend or whatever, like I can do that without needing to pretty much let the military know about it. So that's definitely one thing <laughs> that I, I found very important about uh, one of the things that have really made me want to leave the military. All right. Fourth, I wanted to go to school and get my degree. Um, now I, I get it. College is not for everybody. Some people love it. Some people hate it. Uh, some people find great use for it. For me, I studied international relations uh, with a certificate of national security studies. Um, and yeah, I just, I went, I went to school and did what I wanted to do. Now, what I want is not necessarily what everybody else wants. You know, some people, you know, college is probably not for them. Trade school might be something else. Uh, you know, maybe if you're a technical kind of guy, maybe IT or cybersecurity, that kind of stuff. Guys, there's a million things you can do out there. You don't need to go to college for it. I wanted it. Uh, I wanted to study college. I wanted to get in that field, uh, but that's just me. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much it I got for that. All right, number five, and one that is really important to me, and that is I just want to have my freedom back. Uh, you know, we, you all know that when you join the military, yeah, you give up quite a bit of your freedom, and, and that's something that you have to go in knowing. That's what you sign up for. Um, if you don't like it, don't join. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to, to have my freedom back and just pretty much do what I wanted uh, without fearing mass punishment or being treated like a child. Um, that is That was one thing that really just got to me. Uh, <laughs> I mean, and I get it, but after a while, especially when you get older, I mean, I was 25 when I got out uh, and you know, I was, I was overseas and then going back to the fleet. Um, I just said, no, I'm not gonna do that. I don't feel like doing that anymore. I don't feel like being treated like a child anymore. Uh, when when I came back, it, I was I, I checked out at Camp Lejeune. Uh, it took like less than a month and I was out. I got my DD-214 and I said, bye. Um, yeah, I just really did not wanna be treated like a child anymore. I'm pretty sure right now it's getting worse, especially now with, with everybody having cell phones and things like that. Uh, I can only imagine what the military is like is like nowadays, and it's only been three years since since I joined the military. So definitely, yeah, that's definitely the reason why I got out. All right, number six, and I'm not trying to put anybody down, but uh, bad leadership. Uh, now I've had great leadership and I've had terrible leadership. I've had some guys that you know if if they told me to fall into the gates of hell and back, I would definitely do it. Uh, there's other guys that they told me, hey, follow me to the corner store. I'd tell them to go F themselves. I, yeah, there's quite a bit of bad leadership. There are guys that just really slid me the cracks. They rubbed the right shoulders with the right people. And then there's other guys that the only reason why they stayed in is because they got married, they had kids, they had mouths to feed, but they weren't good leaders. They just stayed in long enough where they kind of knew what they were doing. But, uh, you know, they looked good enough on paper, but they really weren't good leaders. Um, and you know everybody's got their strengths and weaknesses and things like that. But yeah, I I, I saw quite a bit of bad leadership. Um, you know, even when I was at a at a combatant command uh, back uh, back in the states as an intern, uh, definitely there I did see I did see a bit of bad leadership. Uh, you know, even well through like like up in the officer level. I mean, I was uh, I interacted with a lot of like like rural Ohio people, and some of them were great, but then others you can tell that they they definitely fell short on many things. So definitely a lot of bad leadership uh, is, is, is an issue. And that causes actually a lot of people to get out. All right, next up, the pay sucks. If you join the military to be wealthy, you're an idiot, okay? Let me tell you something. If you're joining the military, understand that your pay is not gonna be that great, okay? Now granted, you know, especially if you're young and you're single, you got the basics covered. You got, you got living, you got food, you got healthcare, uh, dental, that kind of stuff. Yeah, you got that covered. Um, but yeah, it's not like your paycheck is great. It's It actually kind of sucks at times. Um, that's something you just gotta deal with. Uh, you gotta live within your means. I'm not a financial guru, but yeah, definitely the pay kind of sucks, but I already knew that. Uh, but you know, when I, as, as I was leaving, and especially as I was getting older, I was like, okay, I definitely wanna do something that's gonna pay me better than than what the military is paying me so another reason why i left all right number four uh another one that to me is very important especially as i get older and that is it's a relationship killer okay now i'm not like now guys look who, if you're watching this and you're still in the and you're still in the military especially if you're young and everything um 
look, I personally don't think that you should take relationships too seriously, unless you're married, there you're screwed. But don't take relationships too seriously when you're in your 20s, especially when you're in your early 20s, because I'm telling you, they're gonna come and go, okay? Um, believe me, you don't know yourself very well at that age. Trust me on this, okay? Uh, there's many things that I found out about myself, even like in the last couple of years that at 21, 22, I would have never figured out. So definitely, definitely take this into account, guys. But uh, what I will say is, yeah, it's a relationship killer. Uh, not a good family environment, in my opinion, as, as hard as they like to make it seem, as hard as they like try to make it a good family environment. I mean, understand that it's like affairs are still very common. Uh, you know, the separations obviously takes a huge toll on families and things like that. Um, I actually did a, a, a piece on marriages in the military. I'm gonna link it down below along with the other video that I mentioned. Um, but that's definitely something to consider. Um, yeah, it's a relationship killer, guys. Um, I, you know, as I get older, you know, I, I obviously I want to I want to have a more meaningful relationship and everything. And and being in the military it just doesn't really allow that. Um, doesn't really give you that kind of freedom to 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 be in a help in a in a in a happy, healthy relationship. Especially today, you know, today relationships are actually really hard in general. Um, and I really am opposed to the whole like getting married so you can actually like, live together. I am opposed to all that. I'm actually kind of not very favorable. Like I don't have a very favorable view on, on marriage today, especially from coming from a, a, a guy because of all the legal aspects. But definitely it's a relationship killer. Be very careful when you're getting into relationships in the military. Um, a lot of guys I know got stuck because they got into the wrong relationship, which usually resulted in a pregnancy and and you know they they had to take responsibility for what happened so definitely something to think about but yeah i got out because i wanted to have a more or less like normal relationship dynamic and i didn't want to have to you know go through the stuff that <laughs> that that you go through in, in in a normal relationship in the military uh i'm gonna you're gonna see it in my other videos so i'll just link it so you can take a look at it all right, last and certainly not least, uh, one that is also very important to me. And I understand that th this is something you gotta sacrifice quite a bit of, especially early on. Um, but after a while, especially as you get older, it, it does get quite annoying, and that is the lack of privacy. Now, I understand that like, yeah, obviously when you're when you're in boot camp and you're deployed in all these other places, uh, yeah, I mean, you're gonna be sharing a lot of space with people, so, you know, it can get quite annoying, and that's okay. Um, I, that's something that you always have to take into consideration. Like your a lot of your personal space is gonna be is gonna be challenged. But like, um, you know, at times the leadership de definitely likes to get into your crap. Uh, they definitely like you know like to sniff around. Um, it does get to the point where it can actually be quite toxic, in my opinion. Um, you know, for me also, like I'm just, you know, I'm just a pretty low key guy. I just like to do my own things. You know, if I'm off work, like just leave me alone. That's just me. I know it's not always the best attitude to have, especially in the Marine Corps. I get it. I'm probably gonna get a lot of comments on this one. Um, but yeah, it, you know, and, and especially when I was in the in the embassy program, you know, you gotta request uh, permission if you want to sleep over your girlfriend's place or whatever. And I get it. But after a while, it's just like, look, man, if I'm if I'm not at work, you know, just if I want to spend the night at my girl's place, like, what's the big deal with that? Uh, you know, a lot of times they just don't like it, but whatever. Um, yeah, it, it just, it does get quite annoying. Uh, you know, I mean, it's, I didn't have too much of a problem with it, but after a while, like I just said, okay, I don't feel like <laughs> doing this anymore. So I don't feel like I haven't asked permission for, for stupid crap. I'm tired of the lack of privacy. So I'm just going to get out. Uh, you know, no harm, no foul. It is what it is. Uh, but yeah, I just, I had enough about, I had enough with that one. All right, guys, so that is it for today. Uh, let me know what you think down below. Uh, I'm gonna link all the videos that I talked about in the description. Um, hit me with one of these. Uh, subscribe if you like, and these videos will come directly to you. I'm gonna make more videos about my time in the military. Uh, also, let me know if you, there's something else that you might want me to talk about, any suggestions that you may have, and I'll see if I can make a video on it. All right, guys, that is it for today. See you next time.